السنة مثل سفينة نوح من ركبها نجا ومن تركها غرق الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أرو بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره كله وكفى بالله شهيدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد As to what proceeds أسأد الله أوقاتكم بالخيرات والمسرات وأسأله أن يوفقكم بكل ما يحبه ويرضى إخوتي وأخواتي وطلابي وطالباتي In our last week's lesson Sheikh al-Islam Abu al-Wafa Sana wa amri sari rahmatullahi was discussing some of the doubts that the people of innovation, Ahl al-Bid'ah, bring forth. After bringing their doubts, he gave a response by eliminating their doubts clarifying and rectifying the misconceptions and making it clear for us, uh, the people of Bidah, people of innovation, are uh, people who have contradictory, they are the first who oppose their own principles. The Sheikh continued to say that this chapter of Ittiba Sunnah wa Chitinab al Bid'ah from amongst the innovations which is discussed amongst thousands and millions of people is the issue of celebrating the Prophet's birthday. So the Sheikh, after clarifying for us a great principle, and this is a qaida which the Sheikh mentioned, this principle is so important, in my humble opinion, that the majority of the catastrophes and calamities that we have in the West with regards to those who give da'wah and who are re in, in reality not befitting to give da'wah is because they have not understood this principle. And the Shaykh he mentioned this principle where he said, and I will repeat it for the benefit of the students, for them to revise, that some of the ahkam al-shari'iyah, not all, so the Shaykh he used the word Ba' Ba'du al-Ahkam al-Shari'iyah that the intent of such rulings is that the Asal Qasd or the Asal Maqsood or the ultimate objective of these rulings is that they be established. Some of the Islamic rulings that have been established is is that they have been given the status in Islam that the ultimate objective of having such rulings is that they be established with any means that are possible and appropriate according to that time. The 
the resources that are adopted in order to obtain this objective are not to be scrutinized or discussed or in other words as long as they are not against the Quran and the Sunnah and the Shaykh gave the examples of Hajj and Jihad and he said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran that Hajj is obligatory upon the one who is able to do so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used means of transportation in his time that was the Asal Maqsad the Asal Maqsad of this ruling of Hajj was that this obligation be fulfilled. The dharai or the wasail that were used during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, this hukam, the asal maqsood or the objective of this hukam is to establish it. In whatever means that may be available. So for example, Hajj requires traveling. And the Prophet ﷺ traveled in his time upon horses and camels. And in today's time, we travel by cars, planes, ships. So the dharai or the means of transportation is not here discussed. In the very same way, jihad. During the time of the Prophet ﷺ, spears, bows and arrows and swords were used to defend and to kill the enemy. But in our age, we have machine guns, we have tanks, we have artillery that has been in, invented in this era. So here the dharai will not be discussed. Only that which will be taken into consideration is how can jihad be established and how can hajj be done. So the shaykh said that there are some rulings in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no need for us to discuss whether the Wasail or the dharai are permissible or impermissible. And he gave the example of Hajj and Jihad. Fi Sabeelillah. After mentioning this, the Shaykh he said, discussing the issue of the Prophet Wasallam's birthday once again, calling it Majlis al Mawlud. He said, but when it comes to with regards to celebrating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Masti, um, um, when celebrating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday, then this ruling is not from the principles which we have mentioned. Because the people argue who celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday, they say celebrating the Mawlud is a dhikr, is remembrance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran where he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 198, where he says, وَاذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا and remember him, meaning Allah, as he has guided you. For indeed, you were before that among those astray. So the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he mentions, he says, after mentioning that some of the ahkam of shari'iyah legislated for the asal, the asal maqsood is that they be established. But Celebrating the Prophet's birthday is not from this type. And the ayah which is quoted, of Surah Al Baqarah, the Shaykh said they use this ayah to justify their argument.
The Shaykh says, but that which needs to be taken into consideration is that the Prophet ﷺ and the Sharia has set guidelines and principles for us to follow on how we should do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we were to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way which we wanted to remember Him in any form or manner which has not been legislated by the Sharia or the Sharia did not give us guidelines then there will be no reward because dhikr has to be done exactly how the Prophet ﷺ taught us. So what the Shaykh is trying to say here is that the people of innovation have taken this principle which is applicable and implemented only with regards to certain rulings in Al-Islam like Jihad and Hajj and they have tried to apply it and make it into a general principle for all to justify and support the arguments. And this is a conniving and a very dangerous step taken by the people of innovation. That's why if you don't understand the principles, just as the Sheikh has mentioned, that some of the principles in the Sharia have been decreed that they be established. And the means to establish that hukum has been left general for all times and all ages. So it will change from time and from people to people. But Ahl al Bidah try to use this principle for dhikr and try to apply it here where this is batil and incorrect because with regards to dhikr the wasail or the dhara'i adopted of doing dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been legislated and the guidelines have been set by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the sharia then the shaykh continues to say and he says but we find that upon the graves, people celebrate what we call urs, or death anniversaries. But we find that the Sharia has clearly prohibited us from celebrating death anniversaries, regardless of whether they are done at the graves or at any other place. The Prophet ﷺ, as reported in a hadith in Sunan Nabi Dawood, that minutes before the Prophet ﷺ passed away, he said, لا تجعلوا قبري عيدة That do not make my grave a place of festivity. Don't make it like Eid. The Prophet ﷺ resembled his grave with the occasion of Eid because Eid is something, is an occasion or a celebration where the people gather together at a specific time, at a specific place. And Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith where he said, لا تجعلوا قبري وثنا يعبد as reported in the Mu'atta of Imam Malik that do not make my grave an idol that is worshipped. So the Shaykh said that these two narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are sufficient for the one who is sane and who uses his intellect to know 
that during celebrating Urs or the death anniversary of the dead people is an act which has been prohibited by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Shaykh, he says, it is for this reason that those who celebrate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's death anniversary, they fail or they can never bring an incident where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after the Sahaba Ridwan Allahi Alayhim passed away, or when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, his companions Ridwan Allahi Alayhim Ajma'een, who loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much, that the love of the people of today cannot even reach a hand full of the love of how much the Sahaba Ridwan Allahi alayhim ajma'een loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the companions Ridwan Allahi alayhim ajma'een celebrated the death anniversary of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extent that the Shaykh said that these death anniversaries that these people celebrate claiming that they love these saints, their love for these saints and the love of the Sahaba for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cannot be compared. And the Shaykh said that, do you not ponder and contemplate something which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not do? Something which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prevented and prohibited the people from doing? Something which the companions did one Allah Alaihi Majma'een did not do? Then we go and do that for other than the Messenger of Allah who we call the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at their tombs and at their graves. So the Shaykh said that so far what we have refuted with regards to celebrating the death anniversaries of these so-called saints. And I have only discussed the issue of celebration. I have just discussed the issue of celebration. I have not discussed what goes on during these celebrations, meaning what the people get up to, what actions they do whilst celebrating these death anniversaries. He said, I haven't even discussed, I've only discussed the actual celebration. I have not discussed the intricate details of what consists of these celebrations and all those actions that are done, which are al mukhalif al Sharia, which go against the teachings of the Sharia. I've just talked about the, the issue of congregating and gathering and all the congestion that happens when people gather at such celebrations. And he said, if you want to talk about them in detail, then we would have to compare the celebration of these people to what used to take place in Mecca, with regards to idol worshipping. And for the reason of why the Prophet ﷺ was sent, the Prophet ﷺ the Prophet ﷺ was sent to abolish the shirk that was present amongst the people of Mecca. So the Sheikh was saying that when we make a comparison between what took place during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu in Mecca and what takes place at such places, then we don't find that there is a great difference between them. And we know that the reason why the Prophet Sallallahu was sent was to abolish uh, everything that was done or conducted in the sacred city of Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to rectify the affairs of the people of that time. So the Shaykh, he says that generally we find that people make tawaf. They go around the graves. We find that people, they present their vows at such places and promises. 
We find that people, they prostrate and they bow down at graves. And then the sheikh, he said, I want to mention a story. Something which I witnessed with my own two eyes. He says, once when I was seeking knowledge, a storm of knowledge, I decided that I wanted to do some research with regards to what goes on at such places, darbars or whatever you want to call them. In the Urdu language, they call them darbar or dargaz. So he said, on the basis of going to research, he goes, I went to the mazar or the tomb of a peer, a saint. And when I entered this tomb, just under its dome, meaning that the tomb, that there was a dome that was built upon this tomb, and as soon as I was under this dome, at the tomb, I saw somebody prostrating to the grave. Because I became disturbed. And I said to Allah, Ya Allah, what is this? So I asked somebody. So somebody said to me, This person, before he lights his candles or his... We say in Arabic language, I don't know what's the word for it, Doc. But you say, Qindi, the Lalten. You know the olden days, those lights that they put on. Graves. He said, every day before this person lights this, he seeks permission from this person in the grave. So the Sheikh said, Subhanallah, seeking permission to do a sin is worse than doing the sin itself. He goes, as soon as I saw this, the Adhan for Salatul Maghrib happened. And after praying Salatul Maghrib, I saw the people, the custodians of the, of the tomb, who I prayed Maghrib with, they all started making tawaf of this grave. He said, then I saw one after the other, one of them, that they all started making ruku to the grave. To the extent that I saw them complete seven rounds, just like you complete seven rounds around the camp. Because I was near the Imam who led the prayer. And this Imam was seated in a specific special place near the door. Because, and then I saw the Imam prostrate towards the grave. The Sheikh goes, when I saw this, I immediately repeated my prayer. I repeated my prayer. This is in accordance to what Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said when his son Salih asked him that if you pray behind somebody not knowing their reality, and then you find out that these people are people of innovation, what should you do? Then Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said that you must repeat your prayer. The Sheikh continued saying, and then I feared that the punishment of Allah may descend upon this place. And it was dark, really dark. And as many of you may not know, but traveling in India in the dark, till this day is considered to be very dangerous. Not like England and in the West and in America, where all there's that you find lights and everything available. In certain places in the continent, you don't find such facilities provided. He said, I left that place in the dark. And he said, this story which I have narrated to you, for Wallahi, I am not exaggerating in what I have seen. Maybe I have missed out, but I have not exaggerated. 
And if anybody doubts to what I say that these people prostrate, they bow down, they make the laugh of such graves, then that person can investigate for themselves. And apart from these graves, anniversaries, you see them build upon graves. You see cloths over graves. They put lights on top of graves. Whereas we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us to do the opposite. There's a hadith in Sahih Muslim which the Shaykh brings. He says that Abi Wa'il narrated from Abi Al-Hayyaj Al-Asadi who said, قال, قال لي علي بن أبي طالب ألا أبعثك ألا ما بعثني عليه رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أن لا تدع تمثال إلا تمسته ولا قبرا مشرفا إلا سويته Hadith in Sahih Muslim. Ali ibn Abi Talib said to Abu al-Hayyaj al-Asadi, Shall I not send you for the same thing for which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent me? He said, that Do not pass by a statue except that you destroy it and a grave except that you level it. So he said, This is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. That we find that in Sahih Muslim, this has been mentioned clearly. In the authority of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But you find that these people, they oppose the clear, explicit words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which are so clear that they require no further explanation. And we find that the jurists of the Hanafi madhab, they also disliked, disapproved. And it angered them when they saw that people would build upon graves. The great Indian Hanafi jurist, Qazi Sanawala Panipati, says in his book of fiqh known as Malabud in the Farsi language, that to build upon graves to lighten graves, put things upon graves. All these actions are haram or at the least makruh. And the Shaykh says that the book are full of such refutations. And he said that those who argue with the Ahl al-Hadith are those who celebrate these death anniversaries let alone presenting any ayah or hadith on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they cannot even provide a statement from their jurists supporting what they do. The most that they can present you is that so-and-so Sufi or so-and-so Sheikh or so-and-so person endorsed this. This is all that you will see in their writings. He said this is possible, their statements and their actions. And the Shaykh last week he mentioned with regards to the status of the people of Makkah and Medina and Hind and Sindh. But he said that such statements of the Sufis or the actions of the Sufis, not only according to the Ahlul Hadith, but even with regards to the great researching grounded scholars, is something which is rejected and not accepted. And then the Sheikh he quoted a line of poetry from the famous Persian poet known as Sheikh Siraz, Shiraz Sa'di. And then the Sheikh said that Ahlul Hadith, this is their stance. And these are the evidences that they have proved, which nobody can answer back to. But just because the Ahlul Hadith oppose such evil actions, they are slandered by saying that the Ahlul Hadith do not believe in the awliya of Allah. And they are slandered with saying that the Ahlul Hadith 
do not have respect for the awliya of Allah. They are disrespectful to, to them. But the reality is such, uh, such beliefs and such actions which in reality are innovations and open the doors of shirk then these actions are of no weight and are of no importance according to the Ahl al-Hadith. And by this the Shaykh, he ended the chapter by mentioning two important issues with regards to ittiba'u sunnah, jtinabu bid'an from amongst the examples he mentioned, celebrating the death anniversaries and celebrating the Prophet's birthday. And then he mentioned the story with regards to his own personal experience as a young student of knowledge. When he was researching on this issue and studying about this issue, he wanted to see for himself. And when he saw what he saw, he fled from such a place. And he repeated his prayer. So by this, alhamdulillah, we've completed studying the words of the sheikh. And this asal min al usul, this principle from the principles of al Islam, regards to some of the Islamic rulings, ba'dul ahkam shari'iyya, like hajj and umrah, then they have been legislated for the purpose of being established. And the dara'i or the wasail that are adopted have been left open or generalized due to the time and the age and the availability and the access that the people may have. And to take this principle and to apply it with regards to the gatherings of celebrating the Prophet's birthday or celebrating death anniversaries of the saints. And this is something which is bhakti. 